If this is your first time tuning in to Living Real Driven, this is not just another show or podcast where I bring out wildly successful entrepreneurs and influencers. This is a show where I showcase people just like you and me who are pursuing their passions to the fullest, regardless of the challenges and adversities that we're likely to face in our journeys. These people strive to be the best in their field, make an impact, and help others forge their own destiny. These people choose to live a real driven life. What's up, guys? I'm Anthony Bose. I'm coming to you live with Nick Updike for the Real Driven Podcast. I'm an artist myself. I've painted for people like Ty Lopez, Chick-fil-A, Gary Vaynerchuk. I have a painting that I'm trying to get to Wiz Khalifa right now. I'm super dedicated to self-development and just trying to get better every single day. I care a lot about my health, and I want to be painting well into my 100s, and I live a real driven life. What's up guys, welcome to Living Real Driven. I'm your host Nick Updike, and today I have a very talented artist who's painted pictures for guys like Gary V, Ty Lopez, and hopefully Wiz Khalifa back here as you can see. But what I admire so much about Anthony is he's very different than most artists that I've met. He's very, very dedicated to his personal development and he's just out there trying to live a real driven life. So I thank you so that, much for being on the show, brother. Thanks for having me on. Oh yeah. So. I think let's dive into where your passion for art began and you know how did how did this come into your life man I mean dude, look at I look at these paintings and I'm like this guy's been practicing art for decades but then <laughs> I forgot to mention he's only 19 years old yeah. which is insane to me all right man well ever since like I could hold on to like a crayon or something I'd just be like scribbling around and like just been drawing for my entire life and uh, I really started to take it serious a lot more serious about two three four years ago I did like my first painting and um, it really just kind of launched from there. Two or three years ago? Mm. <laughs> you just started, you're just like, yeah, I'm just going to start. Like the skills start, have, all, know, serious skills about have this. always been there and I've kind of just been growing on them because it's really progressive. Right. So like you kind of draw and paint at the same time. I think the skills are interchangeable. So like just kind of progressing, pick up the paintbrush, make some terrible paintings. And right. A lot of hours later. So it's, a, it's been a go. very long learning process for you? It's been. I'm going to build on what I learned for my entire life. Were you always passionate about it from when you were younger, or did that passion grow over time? You know, because you started, like, drawing and stuff, and I'm sure it was for fun. Like, you like you enjoyed it, but then as you started getting more serious with it, you're like, wow, this is something I could really pursue and, like, really dive into. Mm -hmm. Well, I've always enjoyed creating stuff, but like I said, I didn't take it serious. So, like, I just draw in class, I'd make a doodle, and it might be better than the kid sitting next to me doodle, but it doesn't mean, like, I think I'm going to be, like, professional, going to sell in, like, galleries and stuff. But uh, the real turning point for where I started to take it more seriously, as I told you earlier, I had that state trooper, and uh, his son's actually a close homie of mine, and uh, we mountain bike, and I found out he passed away in the Charlottesville hate rally. You remember it a few years ago? I and, heard um, about it. But... So he was in the helicopter, and he crashed, and sadly passed away. So I heard about it, spent, like, stayed up 24 hours, did the entire painting, and like, gave it to the family. It was still wet. Like, I handed it to the family like, the next day or two, and like just the reaction I got from that was like super heartfelt and I just never felt the same way about what I could do and the value I could deliver and he had no idea you were making that painting for no. him mm -mm. wow yeah I can't imagine dude like the feeling of because that's something he's gonna have for the rest of his life man mm -hmm. it's it's so I heartfelt so. and so much time went into it so much emotion that's that's really cool man I appreciate it so something I was curious about have your has like your parents always been really supportive of your art career and all that and like really getting into it or do they want you to go to college or see like business or something or is they just kind of like yeah Anthony you know do what you want to do <laughs> you know go with the flow I mean like they've always been supportive of anything that I show interest in but um like most like most parents until you show them some real reason to believe in you like college is kind of like the safety net and like if after you graduate high school it's like where are you going to college like when you why aren't you filling out applications like you got some stuff to do we're gonna get this advanced diploma all this stuff matters a lot and I was just like not feeling it my senior year right. I had the art show I had an art show I was 17 years old and uh the option was stay in Lynchburg and do your art show or go back to public school you have to come back to Richmond and I was like I think mm. I'll just do online school and that's <laughs> kind of where it kind of like started splitting off from like the normal I, right. like, I don't think I'd go to college can't go back so where was that point where your parents were like my son has some talent here like he has some potential is it know, after man. the big We'd monkey guy because I think, I think that would do that for me 
I don't know. I'm not sure what they're really thinking, but like, I'm sure the art show at 17 was kind of like a, like taking it back. Like he, he's serious. Like I had quite a bit of work in the show. Like he's putting some work in, but like they can, they've always known that I'm like, if I'm in, I'm in. I'm gonna go all out. So I think they just support me. I feel that. So what's your favorite type of art to to paint or draw? Like what's your favorite type to create? Or just does it depend? I think the portraits are definitely challenging, and I like the reactions more for portraits because people, the portraits I kind of I paint they have more value associated with them to the person like if it's a gift to the family if it's a family member that's passed away so like I like I really like the reaction I like if they genuinely like it as opposed to a landscape right if they're not connected to the landscape yeah exactly you don't really get a great reaction I feel that I still like it well is so when you're talking about that accident where you gave that guy the painting I also Mm -hmm. saw one where you painted a guy kayaking was that the same person and not the same person was that we tell me a little bit about that one because yeah was there like a story behind it or there anything? is so his name is christian wood and he passed away kayaking in the james river here in richmond okay last year in i believe february and um he just drowned it was super terrible and one of the family friends of his parents reached out to me because they were aware of me from their son in social media i had a class with them like spanish class and um so he was just familiar with my work he reached out to me he said this is what happened i have a family friend their son just passed away it's a terrible accident it's like, can you do a commission for us like, of the piece? We're going to keep a secret and give it to them. I was like, I'm game. I love the meaning behind it. And like, I was all for it. So I had to get some real good pictures. We had to kind of do it low key without hitting the parents right, up directly. Right, right. That's always a challenge. But got a good picture. Shout out to the photographer. I don't know who you are, but <laughs> um, great picture. And it, it really did justice. Well, I hope it did justice. Yeah, and I'll throw a picture of that one in because that one, that one had so much detail you as like well. That one? Yeah, that one was really cool. That with the kayaking through mm-hmm. the river, the water, man. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I really like that one. I just that one popped up in my I head. It. What artist inspires you the most, man? Because is there just one person that you look up to, and you get designs from and <laughs> stuff like that, or is it just all your creative brilliance? Like, where do you get There's your no inspiration? Where brilliance. do you get your inspiration get from, bro? So my grandma is an art. In- she was an art instructor. She was an art professor at a college. So she's had a real heavy hand influence in my life from a young age. Like I said, like pick up the crayon. She'd be like, you should do the crayon and do this. So she's just always like giving me pointers. And um, yeah, she's just always instructing me. What was the question? I told you that. Yeah, is there someone who in- inspired you? Okay, or, yeah, like, yeah. So she was always like, she was always giving me art books and stuff of like professional artists like Leonardo da Vinci. And I'd be like flipping through it and like naturally aspiring to be like him because he's what I'm familiar with. So I kind of set the standard high. I'm just still trying to yeah. reach it. <laughs> Dude, you're killing me. And what's the most meaningful piece you've you've created so far? Is there one that was just That's you put hard. a lot of work in, a lot of sweat, a lot of aggravation, and it's just like, wow, I completed this? Or I don't know if there's one favorite of mine. I like I like the pieces that are most recent to me because I think they reflect my current skill level the best. I look back at old work and cringe, but as far as meaningful to me. The most meaningful pieces that I find are the ones that I know really affected the family in a good way. Right. And are you really attached to, your, to all your artwork? Are you, Not really. No? No. So, I feel like as an artist, you spend so much time on it, you would become like, you're like, damn, I don't really want to give this away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that not ever a case? Sometimes, it's kind of like, it's hard to part with it, but I know if the person actually likes it, they like art, I'm happy to I feel give that, that to them. And are you, are you a perfectionist at all? Because I'm very much a perfectionist, and sometimes I don't want to put things out because I'm like, oh, it's not ready yet. I saw your like, video on perfectionism. Yeah, you killing, saw that? Killing. Exactly. And that's, dude, that's like how I actually am. Mm-hmm. So I was wondering with your paintings, because there's so much detail in them, if you ever struggle with feeling like it's complete. I do. I, um, I used to care a lot more about that as far as the social aspect from social media. It's like, I don't think I should post anything that's not complete. I should have these well formulated captions. I should do this and that and like try to strive for excellence on Instagram. And now I'm kind of just throwing my studies out there, my practices, what I'm doing. I'm trying to give more specific tips and stuff that I use. Like I like to go to yard sales and like a frame like this, I got this from Michaels. It's like a few hundred dollars for a frame to go get a frame to Michaels. And um, I'll go to yard sales and find frames similar, like gold frames. I like gold frames for stuff. It'll be like four bucks. And I'll just take whatever's out of them, stick my artwork yeah, in it. clean them up. Yeah, it's just like, pointers like that can help artists. And like, if I can give you that pointer, 
Yeah, man. I mean, I feel like it's more important to provide people value and show, like, realistically what you do and what goes into it mm-hmm. instead of just putting a perfect picture, perfect everything. Yeah. Nothing about what you actually did or the mm-hmm. process, but, yeah, just a perfect, you know, nice caption. Yeah, I'd rather... I'd much rather follow someone who's actually giving tips and pointers mm-hmm. and all that. And I know you do that. And you do that more than just with the paintings. You do that with all your personal development, the books you read, everything that has helped you along your journey. I appreciate it. Let's actually dive into a little bit about the personal development aspect. Right. Like, how important is self-education to you? I think everybody should be a lifelong learner. Yeah. And what Sounds you... like right out of a book. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone should learn. All the time. All the time. What type of stuff do you do to keep growing and uh honing your skills well i think um where you get your information is super important so like i only take books out of recommendation from people that i respect and like that also kind of glides with books that are kind of well known already so like get a book recommendation respect the person like i'll get the book i don't just want to read an entire library hopefully just get go to the business of section it. of the library there's like a hundred probably books. some this trash one, this books. one has a cool title <laughs> not the way to go do you have but, a favorite book um, All right, that's, that's that's so broad, man. Like, it is. do you have a favorite? How about you name like three favorite books, and then like what, how they've impacted you? That's good. Outwitting the Devil comes to mind. Napoleon Hill. Yeah, okay, I've book. actually haven't read that one. I just finished oh. Three Feet from Gold though. That was... It's really good though, right? You like yeah, that yeah, one? yeah, I liked it. It's super good. Casey it, gave me that one. Dude, it's crazy because it was written so long ago, mm-hmm. but a lot of the principles and the topics still apply to today, and it's like Three wow, Feet like, from Gold. Oh uh, no! I read Three Feet from Gold. I okay. was thinking Thinking Grow Rich. Okay. Three Thinking Grow Rich. I just finished, yes. and that one was written, and he talks about like Henry Ford and stuff. I'm yeah. like, damn, how old is this book again? <laughs> but I'm like, it still everything still makes sense yeah, and still it all applies. applies. So yeah, it's, yeah, that's awesome. So, so like, out in the devil. I just finished a book. It's um, Eat More Chicken, Inspire More People. It's by the Chick Fil A founder, and it was surprisingly one of my favorite books I've ever read. Really? Super good. Definitely recommend. It's more of a biography, and I'm usually super zoned out when I read biographies. Most people bore me in that sense, but, like, super good writer, entertaining. His stories are super unique. He's just a baller. And uh, What's his name, the story. CEO? It's Truett Cathy. Because I remember in Three Feet from Gold, they mentioned yes, him, remember? Yes. They, and he, was, he just seemed like a really cool guy. He's like, a gangster. Yeah, and he, like, really is for his employees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm That's sure, really like, cool. really cool, interesting story. All right, what else? Third one. Third one. Self help book. Um, I'm rereading. Thinking Grow Rich is always a go to for like everybody that answers this question. But um, how to win friends and influence people. I'm rereading that right now, and it's just like that, making concrete in my head. Like this is a great book. Like coming back to it. That's a classic. That's Dale I Carnegie. I, I believe so. Yeah, I haven't read that one. Great. Either, dude. There's so many classics, bro. <laughs> I'm like going back through and reading the classics now because I kind of skipped them somehow. Yeah. So I'm going back. I'm reading uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad right now. You like that one? Yeah, I really like it. I'm only on page like 50, but it makes so much sense to me. Uh-huh. And it's crazy because so many people don't understand, and they are striving for that that poor dad lifestyle, yeah. like going to school, doing, getting a job, working for people. And I love how it talks about how, like having money work for you mm-hmm. because that's so important, especially if you want to actually create wealth and not like trap yourself, bro. And that's something I'm all about, like for people that follow me and Relentless by Tim Grover and Cashflow Quadrants is also a good one yeah Relentless I heard uh, I watched the Tim Grover podcast on with Andy Frisella yeah it's really good he spits fire yeah so what is it about art that captivates you the most and keeps you going every brushstroke is definitely calculated and a challenge so like there's no painting you like it's it doesn't get easier as you go along your work might start to look better as you develop skills techniques you kind of know more what you're doing but like a paintbrush never falls exactly where it's supposed to be it doesn't really happen like that so it's always right. a challenge I like challenges I like challenges <laughs> I like challenges too man yeah. but yeah dude it's crazy because every single picture is so different and mm. like there's so many I don't know that much about painting man but there's a lot of different types of paint there's a lot of different yeah. styles there's a lot of besides painting there's like with pastels mm. there's freaking not what are, they're not pencils dude what are they color pencils I don't know. I see people like the, like the, the nice ass pencils. I don't know. Maybe I'm tripping. They got watercolor pencils. Yeah, but there's just so many different styles to like get better at. Yeah. There's so many different techniques to always improve on. So it's not something you just like become great at and like you can't improve. Mm. And that's something like I always need something to evolve to, something to strive for. As soon as I you start like thinking you don't need any more improvement, like 
You're on the decline. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And actually, like, do you have any mentors? I know you talked about your grandma some, and she mm-hmm. kind of influenced you and got you into art. But mm-hmm. do you have any like actual mentors that teach you techniques that mm-hmm. to help you improve? Yes, my grandma actually introduced me to one of my favorite mentors. Is um his name is David Heath, and he's in a group with um Lois Virginia Babs, Charlie, um, Ronnie Laughlin. And like they're all plein air painters, so we go outside with this thing. Actually, it's a portable easel. Okay. Yeah, so I just paint outdoors, and they've been teaching me a lot about landscapes, composition, like all that stuff. So I've been learning with David for the most part, and um, I I have another one named Michael Compton. He teaches me a lot about drawing and stuff like that. Sweet dude. Yeah. So besides your mentors, like how did you learn how to paint portraits? Did you just trial and error, or did you like YouTube the shit out of it? Um, I used to actually watch Bob Ross on Netflix. <laughs> He's the legend, man. My man, Afro. But um, I'd, the computer is actually downstairs, and you, you see my easel over here. I'd watch the, watch the video, sprint upstairs so I still remember it, do his brush stroke, put the brush down, go back downstairs, and just do the whole painting like that. And that's kind of how I started to develop some skills that I didn't have before. And then as far as portrait goes, it was a lot of trial and error okay. and terrible paintings. See, what you need, bro, is you need to set your laptop up post a big monitor up there and then have it stream to the monitor so you can look up and be like all right and then go and then look up and then go i don't know but yeah that's, that's really cool man because what like if you could give anyone who's starting in art and is super passionate about you know getting into painting and stuff what's one tip you give them to help improve or to maybe just take their games to the next level so trial and error is definitely like people don't want to work they just want to have skills like appear out of thin air and as far as like classical drawing and any any kind of drawing instruction or painting instruction that really makes a difference and really gets fermented in your mind really comes from practice it's like practice a lot fail often actively seek out people that are better than you that's huge yeah. i do that for i mean i, I think that applies to pretty everything much everything in everything. life man you always want to be around people who are striving for more and you know mm-hmm. they're always trying to get better it's super easy to get stagnant when all your friends it's, are bro, you don't have to tell me <laughs> man. I'm, I live it I live it and you have to sometimes you have to go out of your way to you know surround yourself with those like minded individuals that are sometimes pushing sometimes it's hard more. to like split off it is hard dude yeah I don't know big tip though that's, that's super important if you take anything away like surround yourself with people who are striving for more in life mm-hmm something I was curious I kind of touched on this a little bit but are there do you ever have any moments where you get like really frustrated when you're working on a painting like I don't know how much detail you guys can see but some of these paintings are in such great detail and you just feel like you're just like oh you keep messing up or like it's mm-hmm. not turning out the way you want and you just like you're like all right I'll go back to this one later yeah. like do you ever get really frustrated because I specific, feel like I would get super super frustrated yes there's a specific example that comes to mind every single time when I get asked, like, do you mess up? Like, what do you not like about it? Like, people just looking for negative stuff. I don't, I don't get it. But, like, there's this one example. It's for the Chick-fil-A painting. I had a bunch of local landmarks that I was asked for the commission to incorporate in this collage. Chick-fil-A's in the center. And, like, all the places we chose have a bunch of bricks. And I'm detailed, like you said. So, like, I'm doing each oh, brick. The light's hitting this each one brick. Each brick. And it was just the most tedious, monotonous process ever. And, like, I was just waking up dreading. It's like, why aren't the bricks done? Yeah, man. Like, what keeps you going at that point, dude? Because that is so tedious. Yeah. Dude, the coffee. Bricks. A coffee. lot of coffee. Coffee. Knowing it'll get done eventually and I'll be happy. So do you work on mostly, like, one painting at a time and just go ham on it? Or do you, like, kind of work on one and then you work, you get tired of it, you work mm-hmm. on another, and you go back and forth? or Kind of building off that thing that I said with, like, landscapes and portraits, I like to keep myself interested because I do lose um, interest in things pretty quickly if I, it gets too monotonous, like the bricks. They were terrible. So I'll just bounce back and forth between paintings oftentimes, right. yeah. I kind of do the same thing with books. Like, mm-hmm. if I'm – sometimes – unless a book's really, really good and I'm just, like, going through it, I like sometimes I'm like I don't really feel like reading about this right now and I'll yeah. just pick up another book yeah. and read about that so I'll have like two or three books going at one time and if you try to keep going when the interest isn't there like you're kind of just like you're not taking it in yeah nothing's retained alright so you've painted pictures for people like Gary Vee and Ty Lopez mm-hmm. first of all how did you get in contact with those guys and secondly what's it like meeting them and giving them the picture bro because that's super cool we were talking earlier in the gym about Gary yeah Gary's the most genuine authentic person I've ever met 
I shook his hand for the first time. He's like looking right in my eyes, and I felt like we knew each other, and I could call him dad. Like it was, it was wild. But I really just utilized my opportunities. We were talking with Casey, he's still here, right? And um, he had a meeting with Gary. It was like 15 minutes. I was like, dude, can I come? <laughs> so like I finessed. He's like, bro, I'll paint a picture. I'll ship it out myself. Like I'll get my plane ticket, whatever. Like if I can sit on on the meeting, like we'll like smack. You'll be remembered. Like, you know, like sometimes you have to find, like things aren't just gonna fall into your lap. Sometimes you know you yeah. gotta you gotta make it work. You gotta send a DM. You gotta full send. Full send into full the send DMs. It. That'll work. So, like looking forward, what is kind of your ultimate goal as an artist? Are, are there any people like you really want to paint, or any museums that you like aspire to be in? I'm just curious. Definitely. Like I want to show work in the Louvre. I want to sell pieces at Sotheby's auction house. And um, I want to be in the most prominent galleries. I always tell people to sum it up, like as far as like a status point and like recognition standpoint. Like, if the Queen of England wants a portrait done, she's gonna think my name's gonna come to mind, and like that's that. how it's gonna be. So, that's kind of what I aspire to. I definitely want to fulfill my true potential, and I believe like mindset is everything. And if you think your potential is boundless, like that's what it is. It You're is always man. gonna be striving for it. That's fine. We were actually talking about law of attraction earlier. We were, yeah. we were working out. He's like. Do you believe in law of attraction? And I'm like, you should see my notebook, bro. <laughs> we, were t- we were talking about hiking the whole time. We look up on the TV doing calf workout, and this, this person hiking. It's like, <laughs> it's like, what? So, what are your thoughts on it, man? Like, do you uh, do you utilize manifestation, or do you do you work on your thoughts, or how do you? I definitely like, have to stop it? my thoughts when I go negative, and it's I I accredit my dad to this because as soon like when I was super little, we'd always be driving. I'd be riding shotgun. He asked me, "What are you thinking?" And I believe that started the firing process super early. Like, what am I thinking? Like, so I started monitoring my thoughts ever since my dad was asking me that question. And I'm not super, um, I don't know, educated on quantum theory and all, right. law of attraction, like the science behind it. But I do believe, like, you, you manifest things it, into baby. your life. Yeah, shout out. I'm on a winning streak. Winning streak. Yeah. But I think you definitely attract things into your life, especially your primary thoughts. I do too, 100%. You actually you have to check out Dr. Joe Dispinoza. Have you heard of him? Yeah. Yeah, he has some really good stuff, like on YouTube and everything. But that's a side. I thing. can't remember what I, where I've heard of him. He, from. he talks about some quantum, like law of attraction, hmm. quantum, quantum theory, the physics. It's super stuff. cool stuff. It's so interesting how the mind works, man. Like, Charlie I can dumps watch it down for me. He dumps it down so much, but when you actually learn about how the brain works and and how it remembers certain things. Have you read The Secret? Uh, no. It's like the super. I've heard of it. Down. Yeah, me too. I have not read it yet. That's about law of attraction, right? Mm-hmm. No, I'll probably, I'm just probably just going to read it just because it's... I like to hear different people's perspectives on it yeah. because they may explain it different ways, but it all like, boils well, down to the same. So you get the right exactly, one. Exactly, exactly. All right, let's talk about a little bit about Grit. I just finished the book Grit. I was telling you, I've been reading Who's that one. By? Angela, I want to say Duckworth. Or I feel like I've heard Duck of it. Duck something. I'm sorry, Angela. I don't know her last name. It's Duck something, but it's a really, really good book, and it talks about fortitude and pushing through and like staying consistent with whatever you're focusing on Mm -hmm. and i feel like when it comes to painting like we were just talking about you have to be very focused on it and it's tedious like you have to keep pushing through Mm -hmm. so i was wondering like what are some things some techniques you use to to stay motivated and to keep your mind on it and to like push through some of those things um we were talking earlier at 75 hard yeah that's definitely been a game changer like I feel like I'm a completely different person from 75 days ago, like, at the end of it. Recently failed. Phase one, guys. This is another opportunity for you to learn from my mistakes and, like, just keep, How'd you fail, keep going anyway. I, progress photo. He didn't take a picture Forgot in the, the bathroom photo. on what, day, like, 20-something? Yeah, I was, like, in bed. I was, like, all good to go. Knocked out, slump. And, like, I look up in the morning and it's like, hmm. Dude, that's honestly the most frustrating way. To start over a picture i'm trying to remember i failed on day 10 of phase one and by the way guys getting through the first 75 days is no joke it takes a very very extreme discipline you have to mm-hmm. be very very organized and on top of all your stuff i highly recommend that challenge it changed my life too it it's really not got physical me. It's, it's not definitely physical. not physical it's all mental it's a counterproduct but yeah i couldn't tell you yeah. how many times i would travel and i'd have to work out like four or five in the morning like go somewhere travel and then have to work out like 11 12 at night and it's just you don't want to do it did you ever even want if you're to be walking harder? yeah dude so after i mean i don't know about your experience i want to hear yeah, your yeah. experience I'll, I'll keep talking about yeah. it i mean like i'd be out running it'd be i'd be either sweating or it'd be raining and i'm like 
or not raining, I want it to rain. <laughs> or like, I'm sweating, I want it to get hotter. Right. Like, my legs are sore, I have really bad shin splints from it. That's the side effect I got from it, especially from like trying to run all the time. And uh, it's just, I wanted to run harder, but like my legs are about to give out. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely, for me personally, after about a month, a little bit over a month, I started getting into routine, dude. I was like crushing my workout in the morning and mm-hmm. I had this whole like thing planned out. I would just do it every day. And it started, it was, it started to become easy. Like I started to get kind of complacent and I was like, how can I make this more difficult for myself? And then I started kind of adding stuff on or I just make sure my workouts are more intense or I'd go in the middle of the day, stuff like that. Mm. And you saying like you get shin splints and things like something I did at first to help was I would do like yoga and then I would like, like I would keep, so I'd work out hard in the gym and then I would. For my outdoor, I would do something to like stretch out or foam mm. roll, and I'd run. Mm. But I wouldn't. I'd work in swimming. But mm-hmm. if I just kept running every Swimming's single day, workout. dude. Oh yeah, swimming. Yeah, I'd me. like walk every day, and like shin splints were. Real. Yeah, I couldn't do that because that's what I was doing the first month, dude. Yeah. My legs were yeah. trashed. Yeah, destroyed. You talked about starting to get complacent in the program. It yeah. starts to get habitual, and that's where it starts to get easier, easier. And that taught me about living with intention. Because that's when like 75 hard really starts to make an impact is when you're actively thinking about the benefits of the things you don't want to do at that moment because like you're realizing the struggle is for a reason. 100%. And you're not just working through it because it's a habit now. You're working through with that goal in mind. Dude, that, I could agree. It helps agree. a lot. Yeah, intention is everything. You have to have a reason behind it. If you're just going through the motions and you're not putting thought into what you're doing and trying to make it harder like paying attention to the details and you're not going to get the same benefit out of it mm-hmm. and the most important thing for me like it's those days where you're like i really don't want to get over now i really don't want to go over a guy now but you do it anyway you feel so much better after and you're yeah. like all right i basically just leveled up i think of yeah. it as levels dude i don't know in my mind everything's like levels and like growing mm-hmm. so i'm like all right now now that i just did this like that was really hard for me mm-hmm. now it's going to become easier and now how can i yeah. get to that next that's thing? where the real growth happens so it's yeah. those days you don't want to get out of bed 100 percent all right, so how did you take all of the lessons you learned in that discipline from 75 Hard and apply it to artwork and what you do basically for a living, even though you're 19, which, by the way, I thought he was 21 for, like, months until he just told me he was 19 at this morning. What can I say? He's 19. <laughs> so, like, some of, the, some of the things you learned from the challenge, um, how do you apply them to your everyday life and your art? I'm looking at my list just to, like, remember myself I would never stay hydrated now I drink a gallon a day it always makes me get my workout in and part of the challenge is diet and I would never track my calories so now I'm much more conscious about what I have in my body and that alone can ruin your health or make you live super long like can change your overall mood your mental state there's so many things that come from diet and eating properly yeah. and it's just I'm, I'm so much more conscious about what I put in my body now I actively read. Sometimes I just skip days or months. So now I'm like, I didn't read. I feel kind of right, weird. Right, I, get, I, miss I get tingly when I miss my things now. So if I miss like, a workout, I'm like, I'm a piece I of feel, shit. Because <laughs> we're working out twice a day. Yeah. I'm just not working out at all. Yeah. I'm like, it's there's something wrong. Yeah. And I don't, working out gives me energy, dude. Mm-hmm, like, definitely. People, I actually had someone message me yesterday and they're like, dude, what do you do in the middle of the day when you get that like hump where you're really tired? I'm like, I work out, and he's like, doesn't that make you way more tired after? And I'm like, no, dude, it gives me, personally, it it's gives cold me, shower. it gives me energy or a cold shower, yeah. but dude. Do you like the cold showers? I like it I in the morning, like because, oh, it's hard dude, in the morning. when you get up, though, and you take it, and you get out of the shower, and you're just like, I'm yeah. ready. <laughs> yeah. But, no, the cold showers, like, they kind of suck sometimes. It does. The morning, <laughs> the morning is the most crucial. Yeah. Sometimes I'm up at, sure. like, 4.30 to paint and beat the sun, and, like, those are the days when the cold shower is terrible. Don't want to get up already. It's super early. It's black outside. The water is, like, yeah. terrible. Would you say this challenge has helped your artwork, though? Because sometimes I think about it, and the challenge does take away from me working on my business sometimes because two workouts a day, that's a lot of time, bro. Mm-hmm. But then I'm, like, my discipline is so much better in my organization, and I'm, like, it definitely balances out, and it's going to help me so much more in the long term. So I was wondering if you think it, it's helped you oh, yeah. with everything yeah. or if it's... Speaking on time, like, it also made me realize how much more time there is in a day because I have to get my power list done and I also have to get this stuff done. I really have to tweak and rearrange and make everything work. So sometimes I just have, like, stagnant periods where I don't know where the heck the time went. It's probably on social media. But now I'm like, I gotta get this done. I just realize 
so much more how to like utilize the day. One hundred percent, man. I hear people are like, "Oh, I have so much schoolwork." I'm like, "Bro, like, dude, we I have, have the same schoolwork, time. business, doing all of this, like yeah. w- actually working." And I'm like, "You don't even know time until you have to do something we like this, where every like day. thirty minute gap is like something, and you're like, gotta yeah. figure it out." But I think it's helped a lot of time management. Mm, yeah, definitely. But, do you think you've utilized the power list more accurately or more productively after doing seventy five hard? Or like, so, were you doing it before? So I wasn't doing it before. I always wrote, every Sunday, my ritual is I write down everything I want to get done for the week. I break it down into like steps and I write it in like my Monday, like throughout my week. So I know what, like an overall, what I need to get done for the week and then like by day, what I want to get done. And then every day like I have my tasks, right? But I don't, I never did like five things. So when I went to implement the powerless task, I didn't really understand exactly how they were worked i should have went back and watched did this you episode listen to the podcast on that yeah so i didn't listen to him at first but i talked to so many people who did them i just thought they were like tasks so i was just like i'm like all right i'm gonna wake up before seven i'm going to like meditate every day for this amount of time and then i realized they're supposed to be goal like little tasks to get closer to your goals mm. so i started taking them and uh, making them more conducive to my work life and like my I business like, like creating content uh do this connect with one new person and i was like all right now it's really helping me get towards yeah. my goals this is not just taking time away and it started becoming a lot better for me i like the word conducive conducive that's you like up, that one what did you think about the things that you see that seem unnecessary like i think the progress photo every day was so extra and it's usually the thing that gets you it's so like what yeah. do you think about the discipline that comes from the things that just seem irrelevant uh, are you interviewing me now, bro? Dude, got, it's a conversation, <laughs> man. I'm playing, I'm playing. Wait, so I think every... All right, so the progress picture, that's straight mental. He didn't do it because he wants you to be like, oh, yeah, dude, I can start... Oh, yeah, that's that's yeah, coming yeah. in. No, he wants you to do it because you have to remember to do it every single day. And like you just said, that is what trips people up. Yeah. It tripped you up and yeah. it tripped a few of my friends exactly. up and some of my other buddies it's terrible. up. Because you're... So what I would do is I take it every single, I get up out of bed like half asleep. I take my progress picture and I try and uh, right in the read. morning. Yeah, right in the first thing. That okay. way I never have to forget. That's if I good. just do it right away. But I try no. to do it after my workout. So look, so <laughs> I should have done that for sure. <laughs> but I don't know. There wasn't really the reading. I didn't think is unnecessary. I love reading. I do yeah. it anyways. The water keeps you. I feel a lot better when I drink water. I try and drink uh, three to four glasses in the morning. It's good, and it gets your body going. I think Ed drinks like a liter, like straight out of bed. Really? Yeah, Yeah, it's pretty intense. Have you read his Max Out book? I have. So good. Yeah. Um, My body thinks the two workouts a day is super excessive. I think the second workout is a little excessive, and that's where that mental mental part comes in again. It's definitely tough. The mindset part, Mm because he knows like they have to be separate, so you have to plan. Oh my god. There's been times I'm like it's nine o'clock at night and I'm like I have two workouts, bro. So I'll like work out and then come home like eat and do a little work and then go work out again and it's just like sometimes it is excessive. It feels mm. excessive. I took the um the outdoor workout as a kind of an opportunity to get out and explore more. So like I've been really getting around my neighborhood, finding spots that I've never seen before, and just like utilizing the time outdoors because. I'm a hermit when it comes to painting, so sometimes I'm just being inside all day, knocking out a painting, and it forces me outside. It forces me to new things, and it forces me to exercise outside. And it's just a bunch. It's like putting yourself in a new situation, just like learning your way around. I like I, that. I like the outdoors part. Lucky for you, this man lives like in Virginia. It's beautiful. We have a beautiful landscape to go exploring. I live cut. in the swamp. We're in the cut. There's not much to really explore unless I go drive somewhere. But yeah, man, I really like that. You see a lot of alligators? Dude, there's, if you look for them, they're there. They're dinosaurs. You don't have alligators here, dude? No, no. There's definitely no alligators uh-uh. here. I saw an otter today. Oh, really? Yeah, That's otter. pretty cool. <laughs> do you like getting up early? Yeah. I feel like I have a whole second day when I get up early. I get What time do you get up? Usually 5.50 on like a regular day. All right, yeah. I'm, I'm working my way down. I actually started the challenge getting up at 8, and I've been decreasing it, and I'm at 7 right now. That's good. But I'm trying to work my way down to 6.30. It's just that with my roommates and everything, they go to sleep so late, dude, and it's, Keep you up. It, it's hard, bro. It's terrible. It's really hard. Like I feel like the day is like, lost when I get up, when I sleep in. Dude, yeah. by 1 o'clock, I'm like, I already just accomplished so much. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. wow, That's I feel like a whole weight's been lifted off my shoulders, and now I want to do more almost... Because I don't feel like I'm obligated. I have to. I'm like, mm-hmm. I get to. Yeah, yes. You know? Bro, that's such a good change. Yeah, dude. It feels so good. It's happening for you. When people wake up at 11, I'm like, 
Man, I've already been working for five yeah. hours. You are so behind. The day feels so much more fresh, like when it's cooler outside and it's like just new. The sun hasn't come up, but I feel that. I love that part of it. All right, serious question though. So, what do you think it takes to become the best at what you do? Like characteristics wise, like work, not work schedule. Uh, I'm gonna pull work a ethic, self-awareness like, card. Hard work. Um. I don't know. What about in your industry specifically, art, being an artist? Because I feel like it's really competitive. How do you separate yourself and get that recognition? I think a lot of artists start, like, they create, 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 don't have any success. They find something that sells, and then they just run with it. Whether that means they stick at a consistent skill level for a while, just because it's what people are buying, they don't develop. I think that complacency and just thinking you're good just really stops the growth. And that you stop Ego, dude. As Ego will kill you. Yeah. Seriously, like as soon as you think you're like you made it or you're like doing really good, that's when other people are gonna start putting in the work and catch up to you mm-hmm. and pass you. But yeah, I was just curious because I feel like there's there's a lot of artists, obviously. So like, how do you how do you get that recognition? How do you one day like get into those certain museums? And you said you're striving to be in some specific museums. How do you work your way up and get into? I don't into know, those? man. I don't know. I'm at not all. in the museums yet. We gotta just take the opportunities as they present themselves. Do you know anyone who is? personally like, yeah like the loop i know is like all old 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 artists you have to be in the industry like put out so many paintings before you can get into it or could there just be a kid that's like 17 that's just a prodigy just crushing it like painting the most brilliant pictures you've ever seen that just gets this picture in the loop or is there like a whole process do you apply and stuff How does i that believe work? there's like maybe three divisions it's like people who do arts and crafts might be able to get into a gallery there's people that sell things directly to the public and then there's like the fine art circle with all the prestigious art leagues and all this stuff and like those people over here are the ones that get into like the nice museums and it's all about status okay so where do you see yourself in like five and ten years are you do you plan on going to art school is that a thing no for you or do you just so for your personal growth like what do you plan on doing to keep getting better at your painting i definitely want to find some more mentors and every aspect of my life like some more artistic ones some like financial like real estate um people that just have a good healthy lifestyle i got you yeah here we go teaching me stuff first day together we got the ab workout i'm gonna just keep saying it because i love it but um yeah just finding those people that are better than me yeah and i don't have a specific like i can't tell time or the future so like i feel it. i'm gonna be better i'm gonna be more developed as a person i'm gonna be more outgoing so if, if you were to visualize yourself right now like I always, I'm big into visualization. I write down, like, all right, this is, like, what I want to be doing. This is what I look like. This is the people I'm surrounded with, you know? Like, what do you, where do you see yourself in, like, five years? Would you still be living here? Would you still be, like, painting portraits? Who would you be painting portraits for? Who would you be surrounded by, you know? Okay. I definitely, I can't say a specific person I'd be painting for. Just people that specifically are interested in art because those are the people that feels the best when you give the art to because they appreciate it the most so i'm gonna have a bigger community of people that are actively searching for my art it's gonna be nice to give that to them provide value to those people i'm gonna have more secure finances i'm uh, actively building my library i like that so it's gonna gonna be a fat library (laughs) um definitely want to be showing in a lot more galleries i will be showing in more galleries and um just sell more work get my name out there more i feel that so what if like a celebrity or someone big is like anthony man i love your portraits i want you to do this for me you go out you meet him and he's just a huge asshole would you still paint it for him no because do you respect like you want to give it to people who like i'm so long term yeah like i'm gonna paint like i will not sacrifice the things that i'm interested in to be an entertainer i like that i was wondering because there's so many people on instagram that just like all they do is celebrity portraits and it's just, to, it seems like it's to just get the likes or like self um, affirmation yeah, and that they're it. good. Self gratification. Yeah, so, yeah, there you go. It's like, just doing, just doing it for other people. It's entertainment. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm not about that. I'm all about authenticity. And that's one of the reasons when I saw your profile and everything, it wasn't really your profile. It was like, I started watching some of your stories. And I'm you so go, active on the stories. Yeah, and you go through your life and what you're doing. And I'm like, damn, this kid is so authentic. Do you like that? Dude, I, I love that. I, the people, I, I only really follow people and, like, watch their stuff if they're showing their, how their life actually is. That's really and cool. And their, their journey, dude, because that's their real stuff. And I want to see, like, what people are actually going through. And, like, 
the struggles they're facing and a lot of people only post the highlights and all the great things like they're accomplishing but they're not like oh yeah by the way like last week i had a terrible week like i was depressed and right over there i got declined from the vmfa um fellowship program and i just stuck it to my wall so i can remember oh yeah dude use that as motivation to story. drive you yeah do you like it more when i'm like talking to the camera or like just showing my day i like or is there I, think even both, a I think it's like is there a difference i mean as long if you're showing your day and you're like it's all this is what i'm doing like i like when you're like all right yeah so for you guys like this is what my picture is i'm putting like the clear coat on it now yeah, like yeah. i'm like Dude, not only is that, like, cool to see, because I don't know how art works, so I get mm. to see, like, what goes into it, but then also, that's nice to watch. <laughs> that's cool. I like to hear it. Oh, yeah, dude. So, a question I ask everyone who's on the interview show is if you had some in- advice or encouragement to give someone out there who, they have big dreams, big aspirations, and they want to do something massive with their life, like something that both of us strive for, but they're afraid of what their parents think, they're afraid of what society thinks, and they're afraid of failing. What advice would you give them to go out and, you know, take action towards what they want? I definitely get over the fear of failing. Um, That's one of the best opportunities you have to learn is learning from your failures and really reflecting on them. And also, you need to strive to be your best, not your parents' best, not your friends' best, not the market's best, even though the market can definitely reflect how good you're doing and like what people actively want to buy, but eventually you'll strike your best and you'll just it'll be a snowball effect to where you just keep getting better and better and hopefully more self aware and like how you're actually doing. I love some that. people are like delusional on how good they are. Dude, you have to be real and honest with yourself too, like brutally honest. I wonder like Gary's always shouting out self awareness and I'm wondering like do, some people could definitely have diluted self awareness and like how do you come up like how do you find the true self awareness? I mean, I find self-awareness through meditation. Do you meditate at all? I have. So, I mean, something... There's a difference between, like... Meditating people are like, you have to just, like, sit in a corner, like, listen to music, be like, oh... But that's yeah. not really how it is. It med- meditation's all about self-awareness and, like, getting to know yourself and, you're, yeah. like, filtering your thoughts and just being present in the moment. You could meditate by going for a walk without your phone and just listening to nature and stuff like that. Mm. It's just all about self-awareness. Uh, I just started to integrate a new little component to the interview. We're going to be doing a lightning round. Five questions, five answers, as fast as you can. Whatever comes to your mind. All right. And, yeah, let's, let's get goes. started. <laughs> All right, so number one, favorite cartoon? Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry. If you had to live off of only one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Hmm, oranges. Oranges? Yeah. <laughs> what? Would you write... <laughs> Would you rather reverse one decision you make every day or be able to stop time every day for 10 seconds? Reverse? Reverse one decision you make every single day or stop time for 10 seconds every single day? Stop time. Stop time for 10 seconds. All right, you can only have one item with you on a deserted island. What would it be? Genie in a bottle. Genie in a bottle? (laughs) There you go, three wishes, right? (laughs) All right. Would you rather end the life of a single human being or kill 100 cute baby animals? Hmm. How bad is the person? Dude, you don't know. You got to kill them, though. So you're going to kill a human being. This man is a murderer. Yo, watch out for him. He's crazy. (laughs) 